I walked down the street to uh, a daycare that was, it was on our block. So I, I walked in and I, I had Damien there with me and I said, you know, how much is it to enroll um, my baby? And they said it's six hundred dollars. And in my head, I was like, "Oh, a month! Like that's that's doable. Of course, of course, I'm gonna enroll him." But they said a week, and I was like, "Oh, well, that's that's a different story." The reality of the working mom life got very real very quickly for Megan Moore. I mean, that's a little pricey. And when I was considering it, um, they they then told me. We have a waiting yeah, list. There's brother. so many people on the waiting list. And it kind of hit me like, whoa, like, I'm going to have to truly shop around. For many parents, the cost of childcare is the same as or even more than their mortgage or rent. The average cost for infants in San Diego is around $1,600 a month. And with two kids, maybe $3,000 a month. So Megan had the same options as many parents. Oh, thank you. Return to work to basically break even or quit her job. I had no intentions of becoming a stay-at-home mom, you know. Childcare wasn't something I really thought about because when I was younger, um, my grandma raised me. You know, when my parents went back to work, I was raised by my grandparents. So when the time came around and maternity leave was, right. you know, almost well, over, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Megan used to work in programming for a parks and recreation department. Now she's a stay-at-home mom to four-year-old Damien and three-year-old Judah. But she gets some help with her oldest. I have an amazing friend that works in the school district, and we have, we have kids the same age. So... Um, she said, Megan, there's this great thing coming out. It's TK. I don't know when it rolls out for you, but like you need to get him in because it's it's free. And you know, I was my original plan was okay, when he gets into kindergarten, I can start working. But you know, a a year earlier is a, a year earlier I get to work on it. So as soon as as that time came around, I was on it as soon as I could. Universal Transitional Kindergarten, or TK, is California's newest early childhood education program. All four-year-olds in California are supposed to have a free spot in public school by next year. San Diego has already fully rolled out the program, so all four-year-olds like Damien can attend TK. He was so nervous. He was so nervous, and I don't think it had anything to do with socializing him enough, but I just think being in a new environment under, you know, someone else teaching him, it was a little nerve-wracking. And I remember that whole first day, we were at home just worried, 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 but he came out and he was like, I made this friend, I love my teacher, do I get to come back tomorrow? And it was like, it was the best experience. This is yet another opportunity for us as a country to say that we value our children, that we value the people who care for our children. And now, unlike in the 1940s and in the 1970s, we actually have scientific data that will support these claims that this period of development is critical in a child's life. Sasha Longstreth runs the Child and Family Development at San Diego State University. We take this opportunity to really, again, value what we know about early learning, then I think it could have a positive influence not only on these children in this level, but as they move through the continuum. And so if a child is starting in TK, TK teachers will say this is the gift of time. And what that means is that there's more of an opportunity to focus on these social emotional skills, you know, these relationship skills, um, these active learning skills. Kids are in school a year earlier, so the idea is they're better prepared for the next step in their education. But it can be hard to fit four-year-olds into classroom routines. For four-year-olds, um, that means that learning is joyful and it's playful. And so if you were to walk into a TK classroom 
and it was completely quiet and students were sitting at their desks doing worksheets, then that would be concerning, you know, or writing out long passages or being asked to sit for, you know, very extended periods of time. What we want to see is that kids are actively engaged in their learning and that they are exploring and that they're having lots of opportunities for peer interaction. You know, as a formerly K through 12 district, we didn't always think about, you know, play-based instruction. We didn't know a lot about the developmental needs of four-year-old, which are so different. Um, from five-year-olds. We're really good at kindergarten and I think we had this realization, this aha, that TK is not just kindergarten for four-year-olds. It's a whole different ball game. Shayna Hassan is the president of the San Diego Unified School Board. She says it's taken about a year to iron out some of the initial challenges with TK, like making sure the bathrooms are very close to four-year-olds' classrooms that they have smaller furniture and more play-based tools, and that teachers know how to work with this younger age group. But demand for TK in San Diego Unified has exploded. In 2021, there were 1,800 TK students. This year, there's almost three times that, with plans for even more next year. And I think for so many parents, TK represents a raise, right? All of a sudden, so much money that they were spending on childcare is back in their pocket. And that has so many benefits. So obviously, you know, the ability to make ends meet, to cover your expenses, but we know that when families have financial stability, there is less stress, right? There is less there are less cha fewer challenges um, that they're facing and they're able to show up more and better for their kids. But it's not totally free. Most TKers get out at 2 p.m. and noon on Wednesdays. So many working parents have to pay for aftercare if they can get a spot at their kid's school. And the TK program was rolled out without much input from existing childcare providers. It has ended up hurting providers, even forcing some centers to close. Yeah, we've been hearing in the field that a lot of providers have been negatively impacted by TK. And I think it's in part due to a relatively quick rollout, but also it just demonstrates that we haven't been doing a good enough job of bringing everybody to the table, including those providers who are already serving those communities, to see how we can be working together. And when childcare businesses close, it's even harder and more expensive to find care for infants and toddlers. And the businesses that stay open have to raise their rates for those younger kids. So they're being asked to um, provide instead a lot of infant toddler care. And the infant toddler care ratio is one to four. So automatically these providers are required to charge more because they have to um, meet this ratio requirement. And there may also be providers who don't have experience with infants and toddlers, and so may not be interested in serving that community. And remember what I said, we're gonna go to Brothers Playground really quick, so sit down so I can get your socks and shoes on. That could make infant care even more expensive for parents. Megan is already past that phase with her sons and now she's counting down the days until her youngest, Judah, can get into TK. Because that help means she can go back to work sooner than she thought. 20, 2018, I stopped working and it was, it was kind of a shock to us all. It was kind of the, we can make it work kind of, kind of idea. And when Judah finally enters TK, it's not gonna be a we can make it work kind of thing. It's gonna be, we can save, we can save more money, we can, you know, splurge on more things for the kids. We're, we're not going to have to check our bank account before we do certain things. But for Megan, it also means something else. For me personally, I think the biggest sacrifice that people don't realize when you stay at home is the time you lose um, building your personal career. You know, it, it's a big, it's a big gap in 
A to B, but um, I think I think the thing I'm looking forward to most is is getting back in, finding, chasing my passions, chasing my dreams, and doing something that I can feel good about myself, you know.